Hey guys, if there's anything that you've learned about me the last three years that we've been producing this show is that I like to bring peop I like to bring you some information that you probably have never heard of or something that's contradictory to what I believe in. So The reason I'm telling you that is, as you know, I'm a huge proponent of marketing, of spending, you know, two dollars and bringing in three or four, spending money on marketing, digital marketing, lead generation, the whole, you know, you know, advertising budget and all that and giving an ROI. That's my bag. That's my wheelhouse. That's what I love to do. But today I am going to introduce you to a lady that does it um organically and she does it quite well so we're gonna learn a lot from her i can't wait to introduce you to her so without further ado enjoy the show hello and welcome to marketing solutions for local businesses the podcast where you will discover all the latest and greatest digital marketing tools tips and strategies you will need to implement in order to stay ahead of your competition If you are not getting the results you are looking for from your digital marketing efforts, this is the podcast for you. And now, here's the host of our show, the local business guy himself, Frank Deming. Hello, 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 everyone. This is Frank Deming, the local business guy, and welcome to another episode of Marketing Solutions with local businesses. Happy Wednesday, happy hump day, happy everything, everyone. This is Frank Deming again. And I have a guest today, as I said in the pre-intro, someone who actually I consider a friend, actually, and a business partner and um, someone, as I said in the pre-intro, I've met in a coaching event. I'm a huge fan of coaching. That's another topic for another day. But I want to introduce the world to my good friend, the great Kat Stanzik. How's it going, Kat? Great. Thank you for the introduction. And I'm glad you know real people in real life. (laughs) (laughs) What do you mean by that? Well, there's so many people that we don't meet, right? And when we're looking at growing our businesses, uh, especially given the current circumstances over the last couple of years, a lot of what we're doing in business is, is going in the online space where we don't actually meet someone in person. And we either work with a strategist or a coach that we've never met or looking to expand our offerings into an online option where we might not even meet our clients in actual real life, but in what is it, IVR, in in virtual real life, IVRL? Right, right. right. (laughs) True, 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 true. That's true. I never thought of it that way. Um, All right. So, so Kat. You know, I have a ton of questions for you, but before I get there, I want I, I want you to introduce yourself. I already said some stuff in the pre-intro, but don't worry about that. I want to hear it from you. Who are you and what do you do? So I'm Kat Stancic, known as the lead boss. And uh, well, I'll have to excuse me a little bit as I'm getting over laryngitis. So I don't always sound <laughs> exactly like this, but um, I'm known as a lead boss. And basically what I love to do is help people go from maybe not liking, maybe even hating lead generation to loving it and to create that consistency and predictability in their business so that they hit their revenue targets. And what I mean by that is making sure that we have the processes and systems in place that either you or your team can implement so that you can free your time up and claim true freedom of time and money. Awesome. Awesome. Now, as you know, I am also a lead generation person, but I do it slightly differently. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge advocate of uh, paying for my leads. I want to target the ideal person that's looking for me, put an ad in front of them, have them contact me. What's your take on that practice and how does your practice differ from what I just said? I want to like give the funny answer, which means never do it. Just kidding. Um, but <laughs> All right. This show's over. All right. <laughs> and, done. and we are no longer connected. So paid ads makes absolute sense in the right timing. So right. what I mean is, is that, um, you know, paid ads or even automation or technology amplifies what's working. It also amplifies what's not. 
And what that means is, is that if you're not sure how to consistently convert someone, how to actually attract your ideal client, who they really are, what they look like, how they behave online, who they're following, um, how much money they're spending on whatever it is and who they're buying from before you, after you, all that data, Mm -hmm. then if you don't know that stuff, you can't do your job, right? And get them actual results because you're just fishing in the dark versus having a very concrete path to follow in terms of being able to find them online. And what I help them do is make sure that they have that clarity in doing organic lead generation. And organic means not paid ads, but it's relationship marketing. I believe that the best combination is what you do and what I do together. And we work with people who already have that understanding of who they're working with, what that person looks like in terms of demographic, psychographics, their kind of behavior. Um, but what they want to do is find more of them. I tend Mm -hmm. to focus on high ticket sales, making sure that there's systems and processes because you can deliver everyone to the website, but if there's nothing in the back end to be able to have that conversation and generate those phone calls in terms of that conversion, Mm -hmm. you know, that's not going to help. And if they've got no means to be able to bring people to their front door in terms of that website traffic, then what I do doesn't help. So the combination together, I mean, independently we can get results, but I think together it really creates this um, leveraged model that a lot of people are looking for. Awesome. Now you, you, you said a term there that struck a nerve, to be honest with you, because I I bought a course um, and I don't want to say the name of the course because, you know, I'm not here to badger anybody. And it was all about relationship marketing Mm. and i gotta tell you it kind of bombed cat in that thing it put a saw saw taste in my mouth and it's it's like you know how when you eat something and it's like you're drinking like like rotten milk and you're like what the (laughs) heck was that um and that's when it got me all enamored with paid ads because Mm. when i started doing paid ads i started seeing results so you know, help me out. Like what is relationship marketing to you and how is it effective? Because I'm sure the audience would like to understand that. So I take a very clear stance on the kind of relationship marketing that I focus on. And what that is, is there's a lot of bro marketers out there. And if you're not familiar with that term, not you, Frank, I know you are, but like other people listening, Mm -hmm. it's people who leverage the scarcity, the manipulation, the fear of missing out where there's nothing to actually miss out on. It's these aggressive, sleazy, salesy, you know, Hey, this is a personal message that's been sent out to a million people, right. Kind of situation. That's not relationship marketing. That's churning and burning because they want to just get your credit card number and leave you right there. Mm -hmm. Um, when I look at relationship marketing, it's how do people really understand who you are and how do they get to, I mean, and, and it's beyond no like, and trust, but no like, and trust is something that a lot of people can, you know, get around and rally behind. So how can they really understand who you are and the kinds of things you can deliver as a result that happens through building the relationship. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to go and have a million conversations, but people have to feel like they've gotten to know you because people buy from people and they can't buy from you unless they know what you stand for and what you stand against, Mm -hmm. because it is a value-based aspect of things. So a lot of that has to do with content, which helps you do your job even better in terms of SEO and and Mm -hmm. driving results. Um, and building that out so that you can have a million conversations without actually ever talking to someone, but it's all happening within your ecosystem and people are consuming content and getting to that next level of decision, which eventually gets you to the big decision of, yes, I want to work with you. Right. Okay. All right, cool. I mean, you know, I, uh, I, I could see it. The concept is, it's, uh, is very, very intriguing to me. It just didn't work for me. And I, I, I had, I wasn't patient and that's why I moved on. So it's working for you in a different way. So Mm -hmm. you keep in touch with people. There's certain people that you're talking to, you're charismatic, you network, that's all relationship marketing. But the problem is, is the, the likelihood is that course and many courses take a one strategy approach. This is the one thing you do to solve all of your problems. And then you'll make a million dollars in 24 hours. And, you know, just like them, they went to living on the street to the penthouse mansion within two days, right? (laughs) So it's not about forcing a strategy on someone. It's about identifying what strategy aligns to your strengths as a service provider 
And what do your clientele respond to in terms of engagement? And then the aligning a strategy that connects both of those. Mm -hmm. So I would bet that they were leveraging a strategy that you didn't enjoy. And so that's why you're not doing it in their way, because it's not something that you like doing. And we don't tend to do the things that we hate doing. We tend to procrastinate or find other ways, or even go into completely different industries or Mm -hmm. strategies to build a business because we didn't enjoy that. Yeah, that is true. That, that, you know, throughout my journey of entrepreneurism, I, I, I now focus only on the things that I enjoy doing Mm. Because I know I'm going to be good at it. Mm-hmm. Um, because when I don't enjoy doing it, doesn't mean I don't do it. I outsource it, but I don't do it because I'm not going to be good at it. Right. And that's the point. That's the thing that I strive to work with my clients on. That's how you go from hating lead generation to loving it. What's your unique strategy that aligns to you versus forcing you into a strategy? So I kind of look at my framework and I think of it less as a blueprint and more as a buffet. So I, you know, it's connect, converse and close. So what Mm -hmm. are the pieces within connecting that you'd enjoy? If you're gluten intolerant, don't pick up the gluten options, right? There's Mm -hmm. alternative things that you can do and you can still feast. So we're not talking about actually eating our clients here, but you know, that kind of concept of this is something that should be enjoyable and shouldn't cause pain. Right. So, so let me ask you this, uh, put you on the spot here, Kat. <laughs> Great. You don't have to, you don't have to uh, sell the farm, obviously, but give us some nuggets. Still, give, give my, give my audience some nuggets. I'm going to, I'm going to tell people how great Kat, Kat Stanzik is, but I want to <laughs> hear some nuggets from you. I mean, I know the nuggets and I, you and I have had, have had extensive conversations, hmm. but I would love for you to share at least a little bit so they can know how powerful of a woman you are in the business world. Um, I'll share lots of nuggets. I mean, I I think that the magic comes in working with the individual. And so, um, you know, that's why I think people, you know, underestimate the value of who they are because they don't understand their own brilliance, but Mm -hmm. especially when it comes to like service providers, I've seen a lot of this before where people are like, oh, well, you know, I don't have time for social media. I don't have time. And we're going to talk about LinkedIn because I think a lot of service providers actually don't look at LinkedIn as a valuable lead generation source. And I think people are looking at it in the wrong way. I pity those people. Right? Like there's so (laughs) much opportunity, but it comes down to consistency. You're not going to get results for something that you're not consistently doing. I mean, I mean, I love Michael Jordan, but he didn't come out of his mama's womb being able to throw free throw shots, right? He had a innate natural skill potentially, but he nurtured it through consistency. Even when Mm -hmm. he had mastered the art of the free throw, he continued to do it to see where there was opportunity for improvement to continue to perfect it. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm not saying that everybody here has to post 52 million pieces of content a day, but what does consistency look like for you? Is it once a week? Is it twice a week? And looking at, you know, things like we love to look at the algorithms and the data and what's going to position you with authority. I personally like to put strategic effort into creating ease. And what that means is, Um, I'll use an example. I had gotten COVID back in 2020 and I was out of my business for three weeks. I have three kids underneath the age of seven as of the date of this podcast. So I didn't, I couldn't be in my business, right? It was me, some assistants, some VAs, right? Some, some contractors, but I had enough content. I had the systems in place that I could literally remove myself from the business for three weeks and not touch anything and still have people calling me for sales calls, still being able to convert people through content. But that's because I put strategic effort into building a library. Now, most people, when they're putting content out there, they think it's easy enough just to put that quote, right? They're just putting placeholders. There's a place for placeholders, but what we're doing with our content is we're looking at what objections are we handling and how are we moving people to a buying decision? A lot of people don't think about their content strategically. They're just putting stuff out there for the sake of putting something out there. So before we even get to that, I think one of the biggest places where people are leaving money on the table and opportunity is in their own positioning. So there's something called the profile funnel. It's your authoritative, like whatever, whatever platform you use, it doesn't matter. There's always these variable aspects of your photo, your banner, your headline, your about section, your bio, whatever you want to call it. Are you offering value from the get-go or are Mm -hmm. you hyper-focused on yourself and trying to get someone to the pitch, Mm -hmm. right? 
and switching that to a pitch to an invitation. And how are you driving so much value that someone basically feels like they can't succeed without you? Mm, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's good stuff. I like that. Like like they could go along to get along, but true success, which let's be clear how I define true success and how I think anybody should define success is mastery of time. That's what I was just about to ask. Mastery of time is the only measure of success. It's the one resource we're all running out of. If you can master your time and you decide how you spend your time, how much time you're working, how much time you're spending your family, how many massages you're getting, how many vacations you're taking. If you're not in a position of authority and power in your own time, we're not really successful. Mm. So, so let's, let's talk about that a little bit. Cause that's, that's a, that sounds like a controversial topic that we probably have to have a second episode to talk <laughs> about, but, but let me, let me dive in just a uh, slightly on that. Sure. So you're telling me, so if there's a person who basically is occupying his time or her time doing nothing, like let's say playing video games, mm-hmm. you're saying that person's successful because they're succeeding in doing what they want to do. Not necessarily. Okay. So explain that. So what I mean is, um, you know, there's always going to be people who are just going to be right. And you know what, Mm -hmm. maybe that's their version of success. Maybe that that's success to them. It's not success to you. They're mastering their time for you. That's a waste of time. Right. Yeah. yeah. But what I'm talking about that individual. So Mm -hmm. based on what your definition of success is, that means that person who set out to play as many video games as possible, he's successful. But I mean, but he's he's a successful individual because he if was they feel to... fulfilled in doing that, that uh-huh. might just very well be the case. I love that. I've never heard that take on it. But anyway, <laughs> um, I mean, if we're talking about people like you and I, it just doesn't do no, it. For no, me. no, no, no. Like we don't, we don't do that, no. I have more drive and ambition. But you know, if we're looking at if I have mastery of time, meaning I can do the things that I want to do, I can go to the places I want to go, then that does mean that I'm I'm generating a certain amount of income to facilitate that decision. Mm-hmm. So if that person who's sitting on the couch is saying, man, I really want to go and I want to order food, but I can't because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm living off the government here and I can't go to that five-star restaurant because I don't have the means. That's not successful then because they don't actually have choice. Mm-hmm. That's true. So that, that mastery of that, that option for choice, that, that ability to, to, you know, do the things that would bring joy and pleasure into your life Mm -hmm. and have the time to be able to do it. Because if we're looking at like the, the person who's making, you know, $2 million a year in their business and they've gotten divorced, they've alienated their kids. They have 13 ulcers, right? Like they're, they, they've gained 50 pounds. If we're only measuring success by money, then yeah, that person may have succeeded. But if we're looking at their life and their ability to spend time with other loved ones, they're not actually really successful. So you had to go there and mention the D word anyway. um... (laughs) But that can be freeing or it can be debilitating. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, I got you. I got you. Um, All right, great. So. So, so tell me something, Kat, what are your plans for 2022? Who are you looking to connect with in 2022? Who are you um, hoping to help brand and build? Um, Is there anything I can help you with on that? I love that question. Um, So for me, it's all about visibility. It's one of the reasons why I host podcast mixer. It's one Mm -hmm. of the reasons why I speak and it's why I go on podcasts is I understand that it's up to me to get in front of my ideal clients Mm -hmm. and it's up to me to drive value. And part of that is boosting my own visibility. So speaking on virtual and real stages and getting in front of service providers, you know, especially within the medical space in terms of therapists, um, you know, medical practitioner, functional medicine, chiropractors, you know, all of those different variables, um, specializations within, you know, even doctors, lawyers, all that stuff. Um, because I think a lot of people are extremely intelligent, Mm -hmm. but just because you're capable in one area doesn't also mean that you're business savvy. And what I mean is, is that a lot of my clients have gotten to a place in business, but they have no more time to give, right? They can't keep working in their business. They can't keep driving things and need to figure out a way to pull themselves out without losing it all. And so fighting that control, because they know that if they do X, Y, Z, they'll produce ABC results. But Mm -hmm. 
what if you're chilling out in, in the PQR world, right? Where you just want to take a little bit of a rest. Can ABC still happen? Um, you know, and can you trust someone to do X, Y, Z for you? Gotcha. Gotcha. It's a lot of letters there. That's a <laughs> Well, that comes from your uh, working with government past uh, background. But... Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, those good old corporate days. <laughs> yeah. So Kat and I have similar backgrounds, different companies, but similar backgrounds uh, when we work for uh not 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 ourselves put it that way <laughs> right right so we understand other large conglomerations and helping them make money <laughs> yeah so i understand you have a gift for our listeners can you tell us about that um it's the i see the link here if, let me, if i'm not mistaken is uh fully booked.ceo what is all what's that all about yes so fully booked.ceo is a three part instant access training And what is provided there is one, uh, a lot of people wonder what is it that they're supposed to do, especially when it comes to high ticket sales, when it comes to lead generation. So it breaks out what you can do in an hour. um, Mm -hmm. And that helps you exponentially scale your business. And the second piece is a lot of people are already connected to people online, but they haven't monetized those connections. And I Mm -hmm. say that you're already connected to at least a hundred thousand dollars without adding a single new person in your pipeline. So how are you monetizing those connections and helping people raise their hands to say, I'm ready to work with you? What I've provided is some scripts and and swipe for you to be able to leverage to help people raise their hands up to know that it's time. And then the third piece is, is all about how to, you know, you know, lead someone through the sales conversation. It's not about closing them. It's not about pushing them. It's not even about pulling them. Mm -hmm. Um, But how do you lead someone through it? And I provide my personal sales script that helps me close and my clients close 80 to 90% of our sales calls. 80 to 90%. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, Let me ask you this. So you, you mentioned high ticket. I mean, a lot of people say that. What does high ticket mean for you? Was is there a threshold? There's, I mean, I like a, a baseline of 5K. Um, and yeah, the okay. reason is is that starts multiplying over. Um, I think that really when it comes to high ticket, it's what are you willing to receive? Um, I looked at, you know, I had a program that two years ago I was selling for a thousand dollars that now sells for ten thousand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, because you 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 realize the value of it and you, mm-hmm. you know, that's that, that's I that's realize the value awesome. of it, but I also started talking to the right level person who could also value it, right? And who would get results yeah. from it. But that usually happens. Like when you realize the value of it, usually then you know how to find a person that also realizes the value. Exactly. So it's so you up level then. See, you up level and then you get someone like you who helps you find even more of those people online. And right. but because you've got that proven process already that you can duplicate. Amen to that. Awesome. Awesome. So, so this has all been great, Kat. Is there anything I did not ask you that you think will benefit the audience? Hmm. I think that um, a lot of people are probably in their own way and mm. that really going out and getting support to see the things um, I said, I went, I did a Tough mutter once and one of the things and I ended up, my, my teammate ended up not showing up. And so I ended up having to do it all by myself. And what I realized was the obstacles in my way weren't physical. They were the ones in my mind. And so Mm -hmm. those are the ones that need to be overcome in order to really get to success. And the problem is, is that we can't always see our own mind's eye and we need someone's support to be able to really move those obstacles out of our way. Damn. Now that was (laughs) awesome. That was awesome. What a, that's the perfect end to a great podcast cat my friend you are always in my world thank you for being in my life thank you for accepting this invitation and i am looking for great things from you in 2022 speaking of 2022 hook up with cat stanzik today go to fullybook.ceo check out what she's got to offer it's awesome 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 do i have permission to put your linkedin links and stuff in the show notes please thank you Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to put I'm going to fully, fully, fully fill up the whole Cat Stanzik thing in the show notes. Go there right now. It's on my website. Go to the show notes, download all of her stuff. Check her out on, on LinkedIn. Let's check it out on Facebook. Check out anywhere I put her on. 
and you will be surprised. Twenty, if twenty twenty two is the year for you to succeed, you got to hook up with Cat Stanza. So with that, I am going to end this episode. This has been Frank Deming, the local business guy. And you've just been blessed by the great Cat Stanza. Take care, everyone. Until next week. Peace out. Thanks for listening to another episode of Marketing Solutions for Local Businesses. The podcast where you will discover all the latest and greatest digital marketing tools, tips, and strategies you will need to implement in order to stay ahead of your competition. Don't forget, any links that were mentioned during the broadcast will be available to you in the show notes. So be sure to grab them while you have the chance. Incidentally, if you have any topics that you would like for us to discuss on the show, be sure to send an email to the email provided in the show notes or click the contact us link and let us know what topic you would like us to help you with. And we'll be sure to add it to our schedule. If you would like for Frank and his team to look at your digital marketing presence and give you a free evaluation, simply click the request a free consultation link in the show notes to get a hold of them. That being said, until our next episode, make it a successful digital marketing day. Peace out.